Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to English Cocktail. Today, the video is about the metaphysical school of poetry. Metaphysical is a word that is originally connected with a school of philosophy. The metaphysical school of philosophy, which uh, deal, deal with uh, um, abstract topics which are beyond or meta physical so uh, the normal topics uh, of the metaphysical uh, thought or metaphysical uh, philosophy uh, include the nature of soul uh, the essence of uh, being etc so in that connection that is metaphysical beyond the physical reality or beyond the physical world uh, you cannot i uh, mean the metaphysical poetry is not exactly what is a metaphysical uh, philosophy is but there is a bit of connection in connection with the metaphysical in metaphysical school of poetry now uh, this metaphysical school of poetry uh, was a school of poetry or a type of poetry that uh, uh, was uh, prominent in the 17th century england and here uh, what is metaphysical is uh, because of the high intellect nature of these poetry they were highly intellectual these uh, poems that belong to the metaphysical school highly intellectual in the sense that uh, uh, there is no uh, you cannot immediately identify a direct relationship between the thought and the expression or the idea and, and the figures of speech employed or uh, the kind of uh, 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 what you would call uh, images, uh, pen pictures as we commonly uh, call to uh, the uh, core idea. So this relationship is beyond the physical. If you want to understand what the poet uh, really uh, means uh, by these uh, kind of uh, artistic images or artistic uh, elements we need to transgress the, uh, the physical beyond the physical immediate uh, connection there is a very really deep intellectually set base which connects the image as well as the idea and this particular uh, feature which is uh, based on logic and reason makes the poem metaphysical or beyond the immediate physical connection so the magnificent bond between uh, image and uh, the concept is established uh, with uh, logic reason and often uh, uh, by applying the scientific uh, uh, concepts which were prevalent in the 17th century so it is metaphysical for example I mean, uh, basically it is because of the, as I told you before, it is because of the high intellectual, high intellectual nature of this uh, poetry. And for example, in the poem, uh, The Flea by John Doe, it's about a flea which first uh, sucks the blood of uh, uh, the speaker, then uh, flies on to uh, his beloved and sucks blood from her, uh, her uh, body and she feels each each i mean you know she feels the itch, itch and she wants to kill it so he's about she is about to kill that particular uh, insect at that moment the part the part or the speaker says you should not do that because that is our marriage bed so that is a kind of a, uh, a metaphysical imagery she it is that insect is our marriage bed where uh, we are united we become we are united as a single uh, body and soul so how is that possible so immediate physical relationship is not established there but as we go through the poem as we enter into the various arguments we we, we see that according to the christian uh, religious sense uh, marriage unites man and woman and it is a marriage bed uh, where they become they share the uh, flesh and blood and they thereby they become one as a single entity so in that if, if by uh, by relating that concept 
to the act of sucking blood from uh, the lover's body by the insect inside insect the blood of the lover the speaker as well as his uh, sweetheart are mingled and thereby they are united in the body of this particular insect so so logic with the help of logic with the help of uh, uh, that particular kind of reasoning john Donne establishes how beautifully uh, the flea an insect becomes the married bird or, or a particular bo a body or a stage where both the lovers unite and become one today we call the particular type of poetry metaphysical poetry the kind of poetry popularized by poets like Dunn, Marvin and others but they did never know that they were metaphysical parts. That means at that time uh, they were not labeled as metaphysical parts. It's a, uh, it's a name that was given later. For the first time the word metaphysical was utilized by John Dryden when he mentioned Dunn and his poetry in uh, one of his texts which was written in 1692 that means at the end of the in the final decade of the 17th century now he uh, was a, as we all know Dryden was also a great uh, translator so uh, as a prefix to his translations of a certain uh, Roman uh, satires he wrote a discourse on satire as a prefix so in that particular discourse on satire written in 1692 uh, for the first time you will find a reference to metaphysical in connection with uh, Dunn's poetry he said I mean Dryden said he affects the metaphysics he means Dunn Dunn affects the metaphysics that is the first time uh, the term metaphysics is connected with a uh, particular type of poetry again one century later the label was given metaphysical poetry to the type of poetry written by Don and others by none other than other than Dr. Samuel Johnson, the unquestionable authority of the time. In his famous Lives of Poets, the biographical sketch of a literary career of various eminent poets from England. Uh, which include uh, parts like uh, uh, Milton. So in that particular uh, work, there is a particular part dealing with the life of Cowley, Abraham Cowley. And in that particular portion, Dryden, sorry, uh, Dr. Johnson defines the kind of poetry uh, that was followed by Cowley. He called it metaphysical poetry. And he said or he defined in a very, very derogatory sense that metaphysical poetry is a kind of poetry where the most heterogeneous ideas are yoked together with violence. So that was the definition. That was the idea of Dr. Johnson, who was unquestioned, who was the greatest authority of criticism in the neoclassical period. And he said that he just uh, despised the kind of poetry written by Cowley and his uh, predecessors. So uh, it is a kind of a poetry where most heterogeneous, heterogeneous means uh, totally different, heterogeneous ideas are yoked together, just like yoking or by force putting two ox, two oxen to uh, plow. Uh, these ideas are brought together and they are. Uh, joined with force, with violence. So th that was a, a kind of definition given by uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson in his uh, life of Cowley and then came uh, the type of poetry written by Dunn and others were categorized or labeled as the metaphysical poetry. And interestingly, many of these uh, poets who are now put into the school of metaphysical uh, poetry were uh, totally uh, unknown of each other's poetry. Personally, they may be, uh, they may have heard about the other person, but uh, many of them were totally strangers to others' uh, writings. But today, 
uh, we uh, collect them all under the heading metaphysical school and metaphysical school of uh, poetry, metaphysical poets, etc. And uh, after Dr. Johnson's uh, chastisement of uh, metaphysical uh, school of poetry, gradually their popularity diminished because as I told you, uh, Dr. Johnson was the greatest authority and uh, the coming, uh, the following generations also followed Johnson's suit and gradually they were pushed into oblivion until in the 20th century, in 1921, T.S. Eliot wrote a, a seminal essay titled The Metaphysical Poets, which brought back Dunn and others into the mainstream, uh, in, uh, both in the scholastic level as well as in the popular uh, readership level. So it was a kind of a resurrection brought towards the metaphysical school of poetry by uh, Thomas Turns Eliot in 1921 with his uh, uh, particular essay titled The Metaphysical Poets. Now let us look at the famous figures of metaphysical school of poetry. So the major 17th century poets who are called the metaphysical poets include people like uh, poets like uh, Don, John Dunn, Andrew Marvel, Richard Crushaw, uh, Henry Vaughan, George Herbert and of course uh, Abraham Cowley. Finally, let us look at the major features of the metaphysical poetry. So as I told in the beginning, the most important feature is of course the highly intellectual conception of uh, the images, uh, the ideas, the figures of speech, etc. in the poem. Now, uh, I gave an example from uh, the flea, how the flea becomes a uh, uh, the marriage bed of the poet and the mistress, how it uh, uh, becomes a, it, a place where both the uh, souls are joined. He also later says in the poem that you, if, you, if you kill that flea, you will uh, commit three murders. Three murders. One of the flea itself, the insect. Second is of uh, the speaker because his blood is inside the insect. And third is suicide because the flea has also sucked blood from her body. So suicide is one of the most uh, uh, terrible crimes from the uh, Christian point of view uh, because uh, God has forbidden to kill oneself. So that's a kind of a highly intellectual uh, way of uh, presenting an idea. Now second is unification of uh, uh, sensibility. Unification of sensibility is uh, uh, another feature of metaphysical poetry and this idea was uh, propounded by T.S. Eliot in that particular essay where he said that uh, what happened to the later English poetry was a dissociation of sensibility. So I will come to that. What is uh, association or rather unification of sensibility? Unici unification of sensibility can be simply uh, felt or described as feeling the thought and uh, uh, thinking, the feeling, that means feeling and thought are merged together, they appear inseparable. Now, uh, for example, an Andrew marvels to his coy mistress. Uh, the beginning, the coy mistress is a shy mistress. So the speaker is in love with the lady and uh, he has a physical wishes and he asks her to come and enjoy the pleasures of love when there is time and she is coy, shy, she is moving away from the uh, demands or requests of her lover and then uh, he says okay okay if there were time enough I would have uh, waited for, I would have uh, waited for you for 30,000 years I would have uh, spent uh, uh, 20,000 years for you uh, I celebrating or uh, rather admiring your eyes etc etc and at last he says that but there is no time my dear there is no time and he expresses that uh, that uh, that angst that anxiety and that the love and anxiety together in a simple expression uh, which is a quite a notable one in uh, english poetry but at my back i always hear 
the winged chariot of time hurrying near that is a very 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 oft quoted uh, line from english poetry but at my back i always hear the winged chariot of time hurrying near so come come let us have uh, let us enjoy the physical pleasures of love when there is time because tomorrow we don't know what will happen to you as well as to me so uh, such kind of uh, uh, there in that particular uh, line in that particular couplet you can sense the feeling as well as the thought so these two uh, totally different strange things idea and thought normal idea and the thought which are normally set as two opposing poles are united quite magnificently in these uh, lines so that is uh, the second uh, feature I, uh, i i mentioned unification of sensibility third one is of course a metaphysical conceit that is a very strong Uh, identifiable feature of metaphysical poetry metaphysical conceit what is a conceit in literary language conceit is a far fetched imagination so normally we can imagine i mean you can uh, imagine a, a particular thing to something that more sounds like it or uh, that uh, is, that is similar to it but here the thing is compared to something totally strange so that is a conceit but it becomes metaphysical when the conceit is used to prove the point to prove the argument to win uh, to state one's point so the speaker speaks something he had or he or she uh, okay all these metaphysical points were men so uh, the poet or the speaker has a particular idea and uh, he wants to convince that idea and in order to make it what he does is the usage or application of a conceit so the conceit or far fetched images or far fetched comparisons are used to uh, used for argument sake used to prove a particular point so that is a metaphysical conceit and uh, uh, another uh, feature of uh, Uh, metaphysical poetry is its a uh, it's a high wit quality with its usage of irony and paradox give, i will give you another example from jonathan jonathan's uh, uh, poem which is titled uh, batter me three person the god so there he says batter my heart never shall be free nor ever chased except you ravish me that's the uh, the the particular point you have to a particular part you have to focus on uh, it will never be chased except you ravish me ravish and chased these are two strikingly opposite ideas ravish means to uh, violate whereas chased is pure but he says that only if you ravish me i will become, become chased so that's kind of a uh, what you call a bit paradox irony uh, so this is the witty quality of uh, uh, the metaphysical school of uh, poetry and the fifth one uh, what i want to uh, speak about as a, a important feature of uh, metaphysical poetry is its dramatic nature often poems begin with a, uh, an ab- abrupt start without a formal introduction suddenly it is uh, moved on to the particular point just like the opening of a uh, stage for example again okay, in dun let me go back to dun once again and in valediction forbidding morning he says it, it opens uh, with the lines for god's sake hold your tongue and let me love so that's a very direct and a sudden opening this is another quality of metaphysical uh, poetry and i uh, when i uh, uh, spoke about metaphysical conceit uh, i forgot to give an example now let, let this be the example for a metaphysical conceit uh, again the same poem uh, valediction forbidding morning uh, the poet compels a lovers to a compass lovers to a compass so it's a conceit lovers cannot be uh, like a compass how can you compare a lover to i mean like a pair of lovers to a pair of a uh, compass how is it possible now here it is made possible compass as a two hands 
they are united at the top but at the uh, bottom level at the uh, lower level they are separate and uh, on one particular hand there is a, a pencil fixed to them which will go around and uh, draw the circle and there will be one stone hand uh, in the center so in the same way the poet compares himself and i mean themselves himself themselves means the poet as well as his wife to the uh, to handles of a to hands of a compass the hand that is stable in the center is the wife and uh, uh, the other hand, uh, the hand that makes the circle is the poet himself because uh, the poem is, uh, uh, is on an occasion of separation. The poet is uh, moving away uh, for some days for a particular, maybe uh, some personal or official reason and he, uh, the poem is nothing but uh, a consolation and uh, an argument uh, to prohibit wife from mourning. Don't cry my dear because Basically, we are like compass. We are united at the end. Uh, after completing the circle, I will come back to you. So in that uh, way, uh, the conceit proves the point of done. So these five are the major traits of uh, metaphysical poetry. I hope things are clear and I uh, hope to meet you soon with another video. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe, share and like. Bye-bye.